Hey everyone, it's Nate, the Vinyl Guide, and I am here today to talk about my favorite album by one of my favorite bands, 1995's Disco Volante by Mr. Bungle. Now, this was recorded at a time when vinyl records were well on their way out, CDs were the primary medium of distributing music, and Warner Brothers did end up pressing a number of vinyl records. And 1995's pressing of Disco Volante is very, very special for reasons that I'll get into here in a moment. Now, to understand the current state of Disco Volante and a lot of Mr. Bungle's music, we talked to Greg Workman, who is the co-founder of Ipecac Records, the record label that is owned with Mike Patton, who is the lead singer of Mr. Bungle. Now, in episode number 167 of the Vinyl Guide podcast, Greg had this to say about the current state of pressings of Disco Volante. There was talk about re-releasing the Bungle records. Um, I think yeah. remastering for vinyl, that sort of thing. Where, where is that at? Like, what, what is... There still is. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, we don't own... Warner Brothers still owns the records. Uh, I think now it's not even Warner Brothers. Then maybe they sold that part of Warner Brothers to Rhino, or I don't know. Anyway, so to do that, we want to reissue... We would like to reissue the records on on vinyl, um, and to do that, we would have to buy, and the price every year comes down a little, and it's still not quite affordable enough for us. But eventually, we're hoping to do it. Some label in Europe did pay the price uh, to make an, a certain number of uh, uh, bungle records on vinyl reissued, and they sound horrible. And it's it's always a bummer for me when we get fan mail and people are like, Oh man, I just bought the bungle vinyl reissue. And it sounds worse than it <laughs> did when it first came out. It's like, yeah, sorry. I mean, it's with some company in Europe. I don't even know which country, maybe in Germany that just did it. And, and they never got the master tapes. Uh, so they, they're all off CD from, uh, yeah. yeah, from a CD. So now what you are seeing before you are two pressings of Disco Volante. The one on the left is from that European repress. Uh, I believe they're called Plain Recordings. And on the right here is the original 1995 pressing from Warner Brothers. And my copy is quite, uh, quite cool because it still has a shrink wrap and the original hype sticker on it. And you can tell there's the Warner Brothers insignia right there. Now, first off, and I don't want to take off the shrink wrap, but you can tell even through the shrink wrap, the cover art here of the original is much crisper than the cover art of the current repress out of Europe. And uh, obviously that's because uh, the original artwork was available when they did the original pressing, and this is likely a scan of either the original record or uh, even the CD or something. You can tell the detail is very different. If you look at the head of the viper fish there and the head of the viper fish, like I'll try to even compare them side by side here. Yeah, you can really see a difference. This has a much higher, deeper contrast to it, uh, which to me is really a technique for masking some of the uh, aliasing, the image imperfections. So uh, they seem to have a much greater contrast there. Um, and if you look at the back side as well, you can see the diver has very rich blues around them. There's a gradient that kind of comes up here. You can see that, but on this one, on the repress, it's just all dark and murky. Uh, and again, if you look very closely, I'm not sure you can see it here on this video, um, it, it, the detail is not there as well. Here, I'll try to side by side them right there. Yeah, you could likely see the difference there. Again, a higher contrast here. You can see the more kind of was the brownish in the shorts or in the pants of this person. And uh, here it's a uh, much, much darker. Now, what that is the cover differences. If I go to the insert, now in the European version, there is an insert that holds the record. And this one unfortunately has come undone. Uh, the glue wasn't that strong. Uh, in the original pressing, you had an insert, but it wasn't the thing that held the record. It wasn't the sleeve. It was just a piece of paper that came inside the record. And uh, there's some of the cover art there, which is on the opposite side of the sleeve here. This is actually duller than the original. You'll see the, 
the richness of the contrast here, where this looks in the repress looks a bit duller. Not a huge, huge difference in the text. Text looks very similar. The one difference that I was able to spot was that on the original, it shows here 1995 Warner Brothers made in USA, Warner Brothers logo, here, nothing. So uh, other than that, it seems to be very similar. And I even think if you look really close at the letters here, they're not as crisp as these ones. So I imagine that this, again, is a scan, uh, high res scan maybe, decent scan of one of these. So that's really the difference in the covers. Let's look at the records, because th there's a, a big difference here. And I'm going to pop out this Disco Volante, and I'm sorry it's very dusty here. <laughs> um, this is the label of the Disco Volante from Europe. And uh, you can see it's a uh, dark writing with uh, white and uh, what is that, like a turquoise text. But the original one here is a Warner Brothers label, which you, know, you would expect because the band was on Warner Brothers at the time. Big difference there. Another thing that's worth noting is the presence of a 7-inch. Now, um, the way that the story is told. In fact, what I'll do is I will let Trey Spruance tell the story. Trey was on the Vinyl Guide podcast, episode number 180 and 181, and he told the story of this 7-inch 45 in that episode. Inside the early presses of Disco Volante, there was a 7-inch, a Secret Chief 7-inch. What was the idea of that? What was the intended purpose of having that extra record of Secret Chiefs in there? Well, that was simply because you know on an lp there's a certain amount of time that you can have per side um i think it was bernie grumman who told us the, the mastering engineer who told us that we should approach the vinyl that way and shorten the length of side b and you need, we needed to get one song off of the a 12 inch lp in order to have enough groove space yeah. um for the record to work so it was decided that platypus would be the song that went onto the seven inch and we needed a b-side so um, Danny and Trevor and I went into the studio. I think we had something else booked for that. Um, but anyway, we kind of just, that was spontaneous. Okay, for sure, that was very spontaneous, that stuff. That was not, not pre-composed. A couple little parts of it were pre-composed. But it was really essentially filler, <laughs> like a B-side filler. And, uh, you know, from there, things sort of progressed in a vastly different direction. Now... To be certain, uh, this is the original pressing that came with a 7-inch. This is the European pressing. And I don't know if it actually originally came with a 7-inch. Uh, this was a copy that, unfortunately, I inherited from a friend of mine who passed on. But I don't think he was very uh, meticulous with his items, and there was no 7-inch in there. However, I have seen online where there are copies of the uh, of Disco Volante out of Europe that do come with a 7-inch. And some of them are colored vinyl as well. But again, I, uh, I, I digress. I, I think that uh, obviously this is the one that the band originally wanted to see in the condition they wanted to see. There's Platypus on one side and then the Secret Chiefs trio on the other. And one thing to understand about this pressing is that this original pressing has an extra feature, one that certainly this European one does not have. And for that, I'm going to let Trey again tell the story about what is a concentric groove. Let's talk a little bit about the vinyl record, because I understand the vinyl record of Disco Volante does contain some surprises, uh, some Easter eggs, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, so, you know, Bernie Gremman was a, um, he's, he's probably still alive. Yeah, he was on the show a couple, about a year or so ago. Oh, crap, really? Yeah. He's yeah. really, really a brilliant guy. And, um, you know, working at his, in his mastering studio, I couldn't, we, we couldn't believe that he was willing to go along with some of our schemes um, because it was just technically difficult. With um, Faxed Head, I had done, a seven inch with um this was greg turkington's idea um 
was to do a parallel groove of a song um, where we had an alternate mix. So like, you know, 33% of the time you'd hear this voice come out of the fog that you hadn't heard on the every, every other time you put the record on. It was just this kind of creepy thing. So that's the, the parallel groove on a seven inch. But a seven, seven inch has a lot of spatial real estate um, in order to pull that off. A 12 inch record, you're really packing the grooves in pretty tight. And we asked Bernie if it was possible to do a parallel groove on an LP, like on the third song, because we wanted to have a, a secret song placed there. For, like, for example, for the CD, we wanted the secret song to be in pre roll. There's this thing you could do in, where you rewind a CD as soon as you put it in. You can actually put stuff there. And uh, we actually ended up not doing that on Disco Volante because there was a guy who had patented, if you can believe this, he had patented the fucking idea. Oh. And you're going to have to pay him a royalty like for every, you know, it was ridiculous. So we gave up on that. But we asked Bernie if, if we could do it on the, on the vinyl. He's like, well, maybe, you know, never, never tried it. And what it would involve for him is, you know, cutting the record up to the second song, through the second song, and then um, spacing the lathe for the next song a little wider so that there would be enough room to drop the needle after he's finished the rest of the, the side, right? So you, you, do the, you do the song one and two, do the wide cut for song three, and then back to the normal size cut for song four. And then you come back and try to drop the, the lathe right in the, the spot. God, what a pain. <laughs> Can you fucking imagine? Seriously. <laughs> and again, like you have real estate to do that kind of thing on a seven inch because it's a big surface, but on a 12 inch, I mean, can it even be done? But if you screw it, it up, move. you screw it up, you have to begin all the whole thing again. Start over. Yeah. And you, you know, that's a waste of resources. It's a waste of his time. He's like, you know, He's a mastering engineer for Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? It's not he's not the kind of guy I would expect, you know, to take something like this on or to be enthusiastic about it at all. He he just like lit up. He's like, "Oh, man, I want to do it. I want to try it." And uh he took it as a kind of a personal challenge and I think he spent like a couple days doing it. He just wanted to do it. He wanted to, to be the guy who did it. And he did it. It's unbelievable. That that's the beauty of that 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 record. That's to me the the main story of that, and the the vinyl of that record. And that let me tell you, you're not going to see that on the on the represses. That's not going to happen. Now Trey is absolutely correct. One of the most fascinating parts of the original vinyl pressing of Disco Volante is this parallel groove, or what some record nerds call it, a concentric groove. All right. So here's essentially how a parallel or concentric groove works. On a record, the music is recorded in a great big spiral, okay? And you put the stylus on the outside of the spiral, and as the record spins, it goes inside. You put the needle here, and it goes all the way to the end of the record. Now, of course, this is a thousand different spirals. This is just a handful, right? But just really to just illustrate the point here. Think of this as the main groove, the record playing from song one all the way to song six. A parallel groove or a concentric groove starts in the middle and it could be a different song. In this case, it's Mr. Bungle's The Secret Song that starts somewhere kind of in between the grooves and spins through alongside in parallel to the main groove. And what this does is, and is really fascinating, is it, it could be a different song. In this case, in Mr. Bungle, you have Carrie Stress in the Jaw on the main groove, and then on the inner groove is The Secret Song. And really depends which song you hear, where you place the stylus. And it can be really hard because these grooves are microscopic, but here's a little bit of an idea about what kind of effect you'll have when you place the stylus on the record. So now, let's say you don't really care about the concentric circle groove, 
you just want to hear the music, which is totally understandable. How do the two versions compare? How do the current uh, pressings out of Europe compare to the original pressing from 1995? Well, let's find out, shall we? So here you can see I've played both records and captured the waveforms into the computer. And the track that I used is Carrie Stress in the Jaw. Uh, it's part two of the Sleep Trilogy. The reason I selected this song is because there's a lot of dynamics within the song, a lot of changes, a lot of quiet parts and loud parts and everything. So you could actually kind of see how the uh, records are responding to those. And the top one here with the white background is the 1995 Warner Brothers pressing. And the bottom one here is the modern day one out of Europe. And right away, you can see a big difference. There's a lot more dynamics in the Warner Brothers one. Uh, the quiet parts are a little bit quieter. There's subtleties. Uh, and then the loud bits get loud and they go to the very top without distorting, which is nice. Um, which to me means that uh, there's much more tension in the music. There's much more uh, playing with the dynamics, which I really enjoy. And I think a lot of people listen to records simply for that reason. Um, the bottom one here, uh, it, uh, everything seems to be very similar in in loudness uh, with the you know so there's also some distortion here um, the waveforms go right to the top so there's not that much richness and variation in the sound uh, which you know is disappointing that's actually uh, indicative of a lot of cds these days actually this isn't nearly as bad as a lot of cds if you import a cd you have you know it's everything's just kind of peaked out at the very top the whole loudness war thing so um this actually could have been a lot worse but it's still not as uh, I think satisfying is looking at uh, at this one right here. So uh, to me, clearly the Warner Brothers one uh, is the better pressing. Uh, the one thing that this also means is if you want to hear it loud, you have to turn up your amp a bit more, which could mean more uh, floor noise and things like that. But honestly, if you have a, a decent system at all, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and you'll have a much better listening experience with this 95 Warner Brothers pressing. All right, a couple other quick things before we wrap up the video. In 1995, there was also a UK pressing of Disco Volante on vinyl. Now, it was through the Warner Brothers subsidiary Slash, and full disclosure, I've never had one, I've never heard one, but I found pictures of this pressing online. And through these pictures, I've been able to determine a few things about this pressing. Uh, number one, the artwork looks quite good. And uh, I would assume that's the case since in 1995, the distributor would have had access to high resolution files and the proper films to be able to do a really nice pressing of the vinyl record. So that comes as no surprise. I have seen, however, in the upper right hand corner of the cover, there is a little turquoise tag that says Mr. Bungle, Disco Volante, and I believe a matrix number. And uh, that sort of tag is not uncommon for albums whose cover is just pictures, no text. So that helps any potential buyers who don't know what it is to understand what it is. So the cover art looks quite good. I could not determine whether there was an insert or not. I haven't seen any pictures, so uh, perhaps there are, perhaps they're not. I'd like to know that. Please comment below if you do have that information. However, by looking at the actual record labels, we could tell some interesting things. Number one, on side A, the track Carry Stress in the Jaw is listed as nine minutes. And what that is, carry stress in the jaw and the secret song end to end, just like they appear on the Disco Volante CD. You may recall on the 95 Warner Brothers pressing, carry stress in the jaw and the secret song are interlaced with those parallel grooves. So I believe carry stress in the jaw is listed as four minutes something on the Warner label. Uh, here it is listed as nine because it is both those songs end to end. Now, if you flip the record over on side two, you'll see that the song Platypus is present there. Now, this goes against the advice of Bernie Grunman, who of course said, pull that song out so side two can sound really nice. You're not trying to cram too much music in there. Well, on the UK pressing, they decided to cram the music in there. So I can only assume that the sound quality on this UK pressing is not as good as the Bernie Grunman mastered one from the US. 
And one final thing, and this has to do with the Platypus 7-inch that was originally included in the 95 Warner Brothers US release. If you look at the label in the upper right-hand corner, you will see the words promotion, not for sale. And this is put there likely to discourage retailers and purchasers from separating the 12-inch record from the 7-inch single. Now, we know that that didn't work very well because out there, a lot of copies of Mr. Bungle's Disco Volante do not include the 7-inch single. Those who do include the 7-inch single easily command about double the price of those who don't. So somewhere out there, there are a whole bunch of orphan platypus 7-inch singles. If you find one in the wild, grab it. But the point I'm trying to make is with the other side of this record. Uh, not Platypus, but the legendary paper project by the Secret Chiefs trio. Trace Bruance goes deep into detail about how this track was made and why it was made on episode 181 of the Vinyl Guide. But in short, the music on this side of the record has not been made available on CD or any other format. It was only available for the backside of this seven inch. So if we are to assume that the current day represses are from a CD or a non-master source, where did they get the master for this music? So a couple things could come into play here. Number one, they could have access to a master or a copy of a master of some sort. Uh, that could have happened. Or more likely, someone has taken an MP3 or some copy that was recorded from the seven inch and pressed another seven inch on it. Again, I have not heard this track on seven inch, so I couldn't compare them. But if that were the case, I would assume that the audio quality would be much worse on the represses than it is on the original seven inch. So overall, my verdict of the best of Mr. Bungle Disco Volante pressing, and it really is no surprise, is the original 1995 pressing on Warner Brothers. Not only is it uh, better sounding, it's also better looking, it's visually appealing, it's the way the band wanted it to be, it comes with the seven inch, uh, and overall it's just a better experience, especially with that very cool concentric groove. But look, in a pinch, I understand if you can't get your hands on one of these, you gotta get one of the ones out of Europe, you know? And if you have to do that, hold your nose and use it for now, because hopefully at some point, Ipecac will re-release Mr. Bungle's Disco Volante in true form for all to be able to afford and enjoy. For The Vinyl Guide, this is Nate. Thanks again for tuning in. Subscribe to our podcast at thevinylguide.com and uh, keep spinning. Cheers.